Hello and welcome to another Easy Composites video tutorial. We're going to be just taking a quick look at how easy it is to degas uh, RTV silicon rubbers and casting resins using our complete vacuum degassing system. Degassing is a highly effective process for removing trapped air from within mixed materials such as RTV silicon rubbers, polyurethane casting resins, infusion epoxies, all sorts of materials where air can become entrapped when uh, the two parts of the material are mixed together. And if we have a look at this example here, which is an RTV silicon rubber, which has been mixed with its catalyst and then allowed to cure at room temperature without any degassing. And as we can see, we've got lots of trapped air within the silicon. I mean, particularly on this example, this has not been mixed in a way to reduce the air entrapment so that we can see, see the effect quite clearly. But compare that to this, which is exactly the same material same silicon, but this has been degassed in this chamber and then allowed to cure, we can see that this is completely free of any air entrapment whatsoever. So this would have a far improved tear strength over the undegassed version and uh, also an improved surface finish as well. Other materials that we might want to degas, this is a polyurethane, water clear polyurethane. Now in this example again, this has been mixed uh, part A and part B together and then allowed to cure without any degassing. Now we have to look a little closer, so if I hold this still, you can see very fine air bubbles trapped within the material. And then we compare that to uh, this one where we've got a perfect, perfectly clear material, no trapped air bubbles whatsoever. A degassing chamber is very commonly used for degassing resins once they've already been poured into a mold, particularly molds with fine surface detail, and especially if they've got undercuts. And the reason can be ably demonstrated using this um, nitrile glove. If we tie a knot in it, not trying to get any air particularly trapped within the glove itself, but inevitably there'll be a small amount of air in the glove. Tie a knot and drop it into the degassing chamber. We pull a vacuum on this now. What happens immediately as soon as the air is evacuated from this chamber, so we've got very, very low pressure in the chamber, the tiny amount of air that's inside the glove expands hugely, so its volume increases massively. And we've sped this footage up slightly, this actually took uh, around about two minutes, but it does give you a really good demonstration of why we degas and what the whole principle of it is, which is to expand uh, the air to a bigger volume. So as soon as we let the air back into the chamber, so the, the degassing chamber becomes at normal atmospheric pressure, then it crushes that air back down to its original size. I'll try and explain why we might want to do this by means of a diagram on the board. So if I just draw a random shape that we're trying to, uh, trying to make a casting of, and I've got a couple of details that I've drawn here at different scales. So this is a large, significant part of the moulding and it's a potential, or it is certainly an undercut, which is likely to uh, have resin not flow into it properly, uh, resulting in a large air cavity, which means a, a significant part of the casting of the part would be missing if, uh, if we didn't do something about this. Now, when we've got something at this scale, we would generally have a vent hole that we would have put in at the time when we made the mold using a drinking straw or a dowel or, or some other means so that this hole can breathe. And that means that as the resin is poured into the mold it can carry on rising up into this area because that this won't become trapped air because the air can escape as the resin fills it. Now what we can't do is have vent holes to every single fine surface detail, a nose, a chin, uh, tiny um, leaves on a, on a casting, it just isn't practical. You'd have vent holes everywhere and you'd be forever finishing the part. So that's where the degassing chamber comes in and it really is the only way to tackle this problem of, of fine undercuts such as this one that we've demonstrated or I'm trying to demonstrate here. So what we would do is pour the resin into the part and then load the whole part in the mold into the degassing chamber. When we draw a vacuum on the, uh, on the whole part, then trapped air that's been caused where the resin is filled into these fine surface details would expand significantly, just like it did with the glove that we showed earlier. Now, when it does so, that, those large air bubbles will come out and rise to the top. You'll still be left with a cavity, but there will be really nothing in that cavity um, apart from a very, very minute amount of air which is expanded significantly. When we put the pressure back on by venting the degassing chamber to atmosphere, 
then the size of those air pockets or the size of the air will uh, contract uh, hugely so it would be uh, take up a much much smaller volume just like when we put the pressure back in and the glove shrank back down when this happens it sucks resin up into these cavities and so you'll be left with an almost negligible in fact probably negligible you probably wouldn't see it on the finished part and the uh, the resin would be fully occupying uh, what was originally a cavity and so uh, by doing the degassing process with the resin already in the mold we can ensure that all these fine surface details and undercuts are filled with resin properly on the finished part. The complete vacuum degassing system available from Easy Composites is, as the name suggests, a full turnkey solution for vacuum degassing. When you buy the product, you have a choice uh, between this large vacuum pump <coughs> and this smaller one. Uh, the way to decide which pump is right for you is simply to look at the materials that you're expecting to be degassing. If you're working with highly reactive materials like fast cast polyurethanes or water clear polyurethanes then these tend to have quite a short pot life so you need to degas them as quick as possible so that you can get on with pouring them before they start to cure. If that's the case and you're working with those materials then the larger pump because that will empty this chamber in around about 30 seconds. Now silicon rubbers tend to have much longer pot life so if you're only considering and only want to be able to degas uh, less reactive materials like your silicons then this small pump will pull down this chamber in around about three minutes. Now for a typical silicon rubber, that's plenty of time to degas it fully and then use it before it's anywhere near the end of its pot life. So if you're only working with slow materials like silicons, the small pump's fine. If you're working with a mixture of those materials or generally fast, then go with the large pump. Setting up the system is as easy as can be. It would be the same whether you're using the large or the small pump. So we'll pop the small one away and we'll demonstrate the system using the large pump. So taking the uh, silicon hose that's included in the kit, push one end onto the pump and the other end onto the degassing chamber itself. If you're using the system for the first time like we are here today, then it's very important to remove this dust cap uh, from the vacuum pump and also ensure that the pump has got its oil filled up to the correct point. The, uh, the oil filler point is here on the vacuum pump. So with that done, we're ready to go and I can mix up some silicon and, and show you the degassing process. It's the high viscosity of the silicon itself which makes it almost, well, makes it inevitable that we're going to mix in air at the same time as we're trying to mix in the catalyst. Now, it is so essential that the catalyst is thoroughly dispersed that we don't concern ourselves too much with the air entrapment that will be happening while we're doing it, particularly as the uh, catalysts tend to be a very low viscosity material, so they'll always sit on top of the silicon rubber. Uh, but that's, that's not a problem, and we'll just carry on mixing and then let the degassing chamber do its work. Now if we just get a close up on this mixed silicon, we can see that it is absolutely full of trapped air bubbles within the rubber itself. So this will be an interesting comparison to take a look at that and then compare it when it comes out of the, uh, the degassing chamber. With the silicon inside, put the lid on the chamber and that's just a push fit onto this silicon seal. So looking at the valves that we've got here, this is the vent valve which lets air back into the chamber. So we want to ensure that that's closed. So a valve is closed when it's at right angles to the uh, sort of alignment of the, of the hose or the fitting. So that's closed. We've got the valve uh, that connects the chamber to the vacuum pump. We want that to be in the open position. We've got a valve on the vacuum pump. We'll leave that closed for now. We'll switch on the vacuum pump. As soon as we do, we can open this valve which will start pulling air out of the chamber and then immediately we're going to see the silicon start to degas and this uh, vacuum gauge registering uh, very quickly the vacuum level that we've got. So let's do that. Vacuum pump on. Open the valve. So we can see the needle start to rise very quickly and then if we have a look inside you can see that very quickly the silicon starts to expand and froth and foam as it begins to degas and so we've sped this footage up slightly now we're around about the minute mark here and this will continue to expand until we get to a point which we call the self collapse this particularly happens with silicons where the bubbles have got so big that it will then collapse in on itself and so we wait for that to happen this is the self collapse coming up now around about the two minute mark and then once that's happened we can switch off the vacuum pump and then let the air back into the chamber and that's when you see the true extent of the degassing effect. Now it's repressurized, we can remove the lid easily and then inside of course we have our 
perfectly degassed silicon. You can see a marked contrast here if you look closely at the silicon, uh, the difference between this completely clear rubber and the aerated silicon that went into the degassing chamber. And so what we're doing here is pouring that degassed silicon around a part as though we were making a silicon mold. And then uh, quite importantly, we're performing a second degassing step where having poured the silicon around the part, load it back into the degassing chamber. Uh, we've sped this footage up considerably because there's much less air entrapped in the silicon at this second stage. So again, having degassed it for around about five minutes this time, let the air back into the chamber and this could then be allowed to cure fully. Having done so, we can demold the part, so take the original part out, and because of that original degassing and the second degassing procedure, we're left with a perfect silicon mold. I hope you've enjoyed our brief introduction to vacuum degassing. The exact same process that we've used today on the RTV silicon rubber can also be applied to a wide range of materials, such as polyurethanes, epoxies, and in fact, just about any material where you get air entrapment following mixing. Um, the system that we've used today is our complete vacuum degassing system, which is available from our website, easycomposites.co.uk. Thank you.